What's going on, family? It's your boy, Gerald Moore Jr. Back with another episode where we're just going to be diving into the cannabis. Uh, so if you've been following me, you know, you know, some of my videos, we talk about athletes and cannabis. We've been talking about just uh, different things in the space, uh, trying to help uh, really destigmatize um, cannabis. Uh, so really focusing on uh, just talking about it, right? And having general discussion and conversation because I think it's important. Uh, I think it's important that we have the discussion and that we just begin to uh, have the conversation because it is something normal. It's like, we don't tell kids to not talk about trees. We don't tell kids to not talk about fruit. We don't tell people to not discuss certain things. So why wouldn't we not discuss, you know, medicine? And uh, a lot of things get lost. We don't really talk about medicine. You know, kids see people taking pills and don't understand what those pills are and what they do. Kids are listening to the music. And so they hear, you know, kids are talking about the Zaza, right? The exotic or uh, weed or pot or all these different things, Molly shrooms uh you know i'm 31 years old and i i mean alcohol and uh tobacco was around heavy as a kid and all my life um and then weed came into my life i mean that's always been around and so just recently obviously as i come into age you know i'm realizing the power uh of cannabis but also what's been happening in society and you realize all these things are already there you just have everything kind of working against each other uh, you have the school system and the government trying to say, no, we don't want drugs. But then, you know, the government is propped up and po profiting off of alcohol sales, tobacco sales, uh, cannabis, um, and, and the seizure of these things, the war on drugs. We've put money into these, you know, into these um, institutions to combat all these issues that are happening simultaneously in our society and in our world and in America. Um, and it's a perpetual thing. So, you know, when you criminalize, criminalize drugs, then you in turn criminalize the people that use drugs or the people that, you know, uh, can't afford to mask their drug use because that's what's happening. You know, when we think about society and, you know, I come from you know, Black America, urban, uh, inner city, born, uh, you know, teenage parents. So the, the classic example of a Black boy, a Black man in today's society, essentially, in the world that I grew up in was poverty stricken, you know, uh, all you really see is blight, all you really see is uh, working class Americans, right? You still like, you know, they say, oh, Black people don't work hard. No, Black people work really hard. They're just working very minimum wage jobs, uh, multiple jobs. Uh, you know, they're dealing with the same traumas. You're dealing with death. You're dealing with environmental hazards. You're dealing with the lack of ownership of businesses and, um, <clears throat> uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, just even the change, you know, supply chains, you know, the supply chain is cut off from the black community. The black community leaves to go to work and comes back to nothing, you know? So when we look at the cycle of despair that the black community has been in, it's always a cycle. Um, and so the cannabis industry is right along inside that, right? When they criminalize cannabis use, you know, you in turn criminalize black people in the black community. And now we're using cannabis as something to help with uh, pain, trauma. Well, what about all the pain and trauma that Black people people have been through by being enslaved and put in a country, uh, you know, and, and controlled in a country where they have no voice, their language has been taken, their culture has been taken, uh, their identity has been taken, their freedom and liberty has been taken to, to fit into a box that is forced to uh, manipulate, you know, itself. And so, um, you know, it's a little deep, right? But these are conversations that we really don't have, at least, you know, I really don't see people having. Uh, and, you know, I'm a millennial, so I know 
you know, we can kind of be obsessed with social media and the glamorization of pop culture. Uh, but when we really peel the onion back, you know what I mean? Like the shit goes deep, you know, a lot of people get the benefit of having millennial or, uh, or um, boomer parents, you know what I mean? So my parents aren't boomers, you know what I mean? My parents are 40s, mid 40s, almost late 40s. Um, and so, you know, we lived during the housing crisis, you know, uh, 9-11, all these different things. And uh, I've just been exposed to a lot. You know, my parents didn't really shelter me. Uh, one, because they really couldn't shelter me because they were living a life um, that they were still growing up. And so uh, they didn't really have uh, their safety net like they have now. So I got to see a lot bit more, a little bit more. Um, but what I realized, a lot of our culture, especially people my age, you know, we really, that accountability piece of like the truth, you know what I mean? Like we've been lied to for so long because things have been so good, you know what I mean? Like things have been good for the most part, you know? Uh, but when it comes to like the cannabis thing, like, I went to private school. We were smoking like heavy, like <laughs> whole time. You know what I mean? Parents are like, no, you can't do that. Whole time, if you get caught, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end my, you know, college hopes of playing Division One sports, and then that could be NFL, and then that could be everything else. But then now, look at it, you know. Um, but. <sighs> You know, and we have to, you know, cannabis is a, a, a powerful plant, you know, like it's a healing plant. Like it helps with pain. It helps with, you know, uh, cancer patients and uh, helping people get, get an appetite. It helps with so many things, PTSD, anxiety, uh, you know, if you have trouble sleeping, um, there's so many different uses, you know what I mean? Stress, trauma, um, you know, recreation, you know, if you need to, creativity, uh, it's a performance enhancer, you know what I mean? So you could use cannabis as an athlete, and it's going to enhance your performance. Uh, it's going to loosen you up, so allow you to be more flexible. Um, definitely higher vibrations, like you're definitely not reaching the be doing nothing out of the ordinary like you're gonna be chilling like you're not gonna be acting really reckless um, and so that's what I really enjoy about it you know it's really it's the stigma of Really, I mean, really cannabis allows you to uh, become one with yourself, right? Like you start to feel, you feel your body more. Uh, I feel like you live in your thoughts more and your expressions more. Um, you know, it really relaxes you. And so, I mean, if you're uptight, if you're stressed, um, anxious, like all of that stuff. So, you know, obviously cannabis isn't for everybody though. You know, that's the one thing that I really, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. And, you know, it's all about moderation too, right? Like if you drink too much water, you'll die. Like you'll drown yourself, literally. So, you know, it's like anything else, if you eat too much food, something's gonna happen. Like, uh, but the thing that I do love about cannabis is like, as opposed to any other pain management, um, you can't overdose. You can smoke as much as you want and you will never overdose on weed. You can't say that about Tylenol. You take one too many Tylenol, you out of there or you rush to the ER. You take one too many uh, pills or anything that they're gonna prescribe you um, death. I can smoke all day. You can't drink all day. I mean, you can drink all day, but you're going to get your stomach pumped. You can't do it for a long time. You know, um, 
cannabis, you can consume it in many different ways. You have uh, topicals, you have vape pens. So you got the vape cartridges, uh, you got uh, flour, um, tinctures, balms, rubs. So there's a lot of different ways that you can consume it. Um, and so it's just, you know, it's an all around genius plant, you know, and then you think about the, the, the industrial uses. I mean, it could be used, you know, to make things, you know what I mean? So whatever you want, you know, whatever type of materials you want. Um, and so really when you think about like the things that are gonna be used, can cannabis and hemp are gonna be used for, you know, hempcrete, uh, you know, you got beds for animals, you got food products, you got, you know, medicinal products, you got hair care products, you got lotions, you got all types of stuff. So shoes, cars, hemp is gonna be in everything. Like it's gonna change our world. Paper towels, toilet paper, carpet probably, you know what I mean? Like the supply chain is gonna change. Hemp is in Canada is gonna change the entire supply chain. So, you know, it's, it's a beautiful time to be alive. You know, obviously it's scary because if you don't understand it or you don't see like the future, if you're not looking 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years out, and you're only looking what's happening now, you know, yeah, it'd be very like daunting. But when you think about, all right, it takes time to educate people. It takes time to um, get things in the mainstream. It get, takes time to plant a crop, harvest a crop, process a crop, uh, change rules, change laws, change legislation, educate police officers, educate, you know, uh, state officials as educate teachers parent like so yeah it's a huge undertaking it should have never happened right like i feel like cannabis should have never been legal in the illegal in the first place uh but obviously we're here and so it is what it is um but that's why you know i've really uh enjoyed the pandemic because it's kind of forced me to kind of be inside and do things like this this video where in my house, the cops can't really do nothing to me. You know what I mean? So I can have my weed. You know what I mean? Because as soon as you step out of the house and you're driving, tail light out, you don't turn a signal on. Well, there's so many different things that could happen where you could be subject to getting pulled over. I'm in Ohio. So every jurisdiction in Ohio hasn't legalized cannabis. So, you know, there's moratoriums in certain places. So who's to say that I get pulled over and, you know, I, the scent of weed, and I'm a black man, you know, so there's just so many for me, like, it's just, that's the life we have to live, right? You always, like, I live with a checkbox in my life since I was, since I went to college, for real, for real, probably before that, but I've always had a checklist, you know what I mean? Before I leave, if I'm driving, I make sure I'm driving a solid car. I don't drive nothing old. I don't drive nothing out of date. Uh, make sure all my stuff is ducks in a row. Um, and then I make sure usually I have like my bowl rings, like one of my championship rings with Ohio on it. I usually try to have, you know, like an Ohio sticker, Ohio University sticker on my bumper. Because these are things we got to understand, like people, humans are visual creatures by nature. You know what I mean? So most times people are making snap judgments about you based on what you drive. So, you know, that's how, you know, we get picked apart all the time. You know what I mean? People that drive nice cars really ain't gonna get pulled over. Like if you driving a nice car in a neighborhood and a cop pull you over, most likely what's gonna happen is the cop is gonna pull you over. That person that drives that nice car knows his laws. He knows his rules. He knows that he's driving in a community that he pays taxes in. 
he's probably funding somebody or something or a multitude of things. So what happens is when you are, when you have money, you live in certain jurisdictions, right? And so those certain jurisdictions, you're living there for a reason. There are certain benefits um, to why you live there, whether you perceive it to be safe, whether you perceive it to have good schools, whether you perceive it to have good shopping and amenities and just lifestyle. So that being said, people that live in typically suburbs, their police are going to be geared towards protecting that community. So the kids, if the kids do something, oh, they're just kids, they're playing around. It wasn't anything serious. Their parents are such and such, you know what I mean? Lawyers, doctors, good people, you know what I mean? This kid is gonna be okay. He's gonna go to a good school, he's gonna get his act together, but he's just being a kid, you know what I mean? Black community, 14, 15, 16 year olds running around, oh, they're gangsters, they're thugs, they're hoodlums, they're all these different things. They're kids. Um, their environments are just completely different. Um, they're forced to live in a reality where, you know, the system again, when you talk about cannabis, people are being locked up for cannabis in the black and brown community because they're doing it illicitly. They're doing it on a, a legacy market. Um, and so it's competing with, you know, the legal market and they're not paying taxes on it. So then again, you're breaking the law in the in this aspect of things. And so the cycle is always against us. You know what I mean? We are not privy of what's going on. We don't have lawyers like that. We don't have general counsel and things like that. But sorry about that, I had to pause. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's just all been a setup for failure. And you really don't have anybody teaching the culture what's going on. So that's what I realized too. Like now that I'm, you know, I'm of age, I'm 31, I've lived a little bit, I've had corporate experience, you know, grew up in the church, did all that, you know, cross every box, right? Dotted every T, crossed or crossed every T, dotted every I, did everything that you said I'm supposed to do just to get through white America, right? I did all that shit, right? Because I had to go to private school, got the private school degree, you know what I mean? Shirt and tie, boy. I, I've been tying a shirt and tie for ages. That's why I don't, all the tech tycoons, what they wear now, hoodies, black tee, and, and, and jeans, okay? Richest guys in the world. Jeff Bezos wears a hoodie, a t-shirt, and jeans, okay? That being said, we've been told that we have to fit in, right? We've been told that, you know, integration, you gotta fit in, you gotta cut your hair, you got, there's all these rules and regulations and things that, and it's like, yo, there is no rules. There is no regulations. Like anybody trying to put rules and regulations over people, that's slavery. Simple as that, you know? So yeah, when you go to work for somebody and they have bylaws and rules, yes. When you're working in a structure and a system to keep order, there has to be laws, there has to be rules, there has to be um, reprimands, there has to be certain things to keep order. In order to keep slaves in order, there had to be a hierarchy, there had to be a slave master, there had to be overseers or the slave master's family who whose family owned slaves, the kids owned slaves. That's what we don't really talk about, like kids of the slave masters own slaves. Oh. Well, you know, it's a dirty game, man. You know, it's a dirty game and, uh, you know, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna give you the information for free because you gotta think we've been going through this for 400 years, you know? So somebody like myself, you know, White people think, you know, you have like good white people right now that think they're doing good, but they're really doing more harm because they would rather set up programs in their image, again, doing the same thing. 
you know, um, things have to be incorporated in their way. Things have to be uh, done on their time. Things have to be done in uh, their manner, their image. Uh, and so, you know, you just realize that's part of the system. You know, they're so uh, aloof to the reality of obviously what black people go through because they don't, you know, so, you know, I think, right, intentionality is always key, um, but that's why, you know, I prefer to consume cannabis because it allows you to see through the fake too, right? It allows you to see, take a step back and see what's real. It allows you to take things for face value uh, and realize that there's a deeper meaning, you know? Everybody's not like us. Everybody's not like you. Everybody don't move like you move everybody's vision ain't what you uh everybody's vision isn't what you uh what you envision everybody's reality and ability to do research and understand history and how history plays a role in what's happening right now you know and what's our position in that you know what i mean a lot of people really just play shit safe and nobody ever became great playing shit safe. And that's the, that's the, if you take anything away from what I've said today, nobody's ever done anything great doing shit safe, period. You gotta take risk. You gotta speak your mind. You gotta uh, live courageously. You know what I mean? Like every day that you get up is a new day. Every day you get up is a new opportunity to do something that's never been done before. Uh, and that, I mean, that just gives me goosebumps realizing that, man, like I can accomplish something in this world that nobody's ever done before. And it's got my name on it. You know, I've already done it multiple times and I do it every day. And so, especially with the cannabis industry, every day is a new day to do something that hasn't been done before. Um, and so, you know, I implore, you know, anybody that watches this video uh, to really get involved in the cannabis space and start studying, even if it's just starting to study it, even if it's just taking 10 minutes out of your day to watch a YouTube video on CBD or on cannabis or on the hemp industry or on THC or on the other thousands of cannabinoids or on how we have an endocannabinoid system already in our bodies. So cannabis is perfect for our bodies. It's a perfect medicine. It's a perfect uh, healing uh, uh, tool for us. Uh, and so I think, you know, it's important for us to do those things, to always be growing and learning, you know, uh, it's easy to become stagnant. It's easily easy to become comfortable uh, and, and stop challenging yourself to be better. Uh, but you know, if you don't, you're gonna get left behind. You know what I mean? It's like if you look at what's happening in the cryptocurrency space, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, all these different currencies, and all it is is just people becoming more. Uh, our, our society becoming more decentralized and people being able to make transactions globally uh, and do contracts and sell art and sell real estate, sell cars, sell anything, you know, uh, on a global scale uh, that's, that has transparency where, you know, a lot of, you know, our business in, in America really isn't transparent. So um, it's best to get hip now than to be you know, on the backside of things five, 10 years from now and being like, damn, I wish I would have caught on. I mean, Bitcoin been going for a decade plus now. So think about the people that was, you know, on it when it was just a couple cents. You talk about Dogecoin, uh, you talk about Ethereum, you talk about all these, uh, you know, so, you know, think about cannabis on the, on the Bitcoin, I mean, on, on, on the uh, blockchain technology, you know what I mean? It's just going to be endless selling seed, like, <laughs> The world is a different place, you know what I mean? Technology is different. You know, our ability to connect, our ability to reach other people, our ability to, to, to share uh, is, is big. So, 
But I'm 30 minutes in. That's all I got for y'all right now on this episode. Just wanted to check in with the people. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, if you want to check in with me, please follow me on uh, Instagram at Gerald Moore Jr. Twitter at Gerald Moore underscore Jr. Also follow Athletes and Cannabis, um, athletesandcannabis.com. Follow us on Instagram at Athletes and Cannabis, uh, Twitter, Athletes Cannabis. Uh, and, and just keep following the wave, you know what I mean? Please reach out if you got any comments, if you got any topics that you want me to discuss, talk about. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, uh, from the East Coast, uh, raised in the DMV, so I have a pretty good perspective from the East Coast to the Midwest, what's going on. Uh, like I said, former All-American, uh, D1 athlete, I'm a coach, trainer, entrepreneur, cannabis advocate, president of a nonprofit, green environmental outreach, uh, 501c3 nonprofit. So uh, I'm a hustler, man. I'm just trying to try, just trying to be great. You know, husband, father, uh, you know, commercial model and actor, creative. Uh, you know, so I'm just trying to build and you know, do something great, do something that's never been done before again. You know, that's what we always striving for is to always be one day better. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in to my channel. I uh, appreciate the support. Uh, please check that like button, uh, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, do what y'all do. Peace.